Hey everybody. Welcome to our adrenal health class. I am just gonna wait for some lovely folks to join me and oil up while I wait. Hmm. I'm gonna put on today. So this is a topic that I really love talking about. Um, it's near and dear to my heart. It's very personal to me. It's a big part of my own journey. So I'm really excited for you guys to be with me tonight and hopefully be asking questions and throwing out comments and you know just um, being a whole part of this. So um, if somebody's on, can you just let me know if you can hear me okay? I haven't done a live in this group for a while, so I just wanna make sure that you guys can hear me and that it's all good. So as you're coming on, if somebody can give just me a, gives me a thumbs up, let me know that you can hear me okay. And also I would love to hear what is one thing that you are hoping to learn tonight? I mean, there's a million ways you could be spending your Monday night. So you chose to come here, um, tell me why. What are you hoping to learn? Um, maybe you took one of the adrenal symptom checklists um, before you popped in the class and maybe that kind of got your wheels spinning a little bit, but um, please tell me what you are hoping that tonight will give to you. Hello, Erica. Hey, Christina. Oh, Shannon, hi. Oh, thank you, Christina, for the thumbs up. Okay, awesome. Okay, Michelle, how to heal adrenals. Can you tell me a little bit more about that for you specifically? Is there a symptom that you're dealing with or um, do you have a diagnosis of adrenal fatigue? Is, what is it specifically around? Or maybe you, you're feeling great and you're just coming just to learn. I like to hear specific reasons why people have come so that I can tailor the information that I share. So. Hey, Michael. So as you come on, I would love, I don't want to have lurkers in this class. So those of you who can type something um, while you're watching, I would love for you to share with me one reason why you decided to take time out of your night tonight to come um, and participate in this class. Tell me one thing you're hoping to learn, one thing you're hoping to find a solution for. Um, just tell me why you're here. Okay, so you do have adrenal fatigue. Okay. And what are you doing for it so far, Michelle? I'd love to. I love to know kind of what you're, what you're doing, for it. Hey, Lydia. Hey, guys. Okay. Anything you do other than Endoflex and Roller for supplements and oils? We are going to talk a lot about um, some supplements and oils tonight for sure. Uh, constant fatigue is something you're wrestling with. Okay. Erica always feels tired and sluggish. Okay, awesome. Anyone else who has come on this class tonight who already has either had a diagnosis of adrenal fatigue or they're pretty sure that they have adrenal fatigue, if you are in that situation, maybe give me a little wave or a thumbs up or something. Um, if you kind of are coming to this class knowing, yeah, I'm hoping to find some information that I can actually really use because I know that I'm in a situation where my adrenals are a little bit compromised. Um, here you've been dealing with adrenal fatigue, chronic, chronic stress, and fatigue. Okay, Christina's here. You're not sure what it is. You're just you just showed up. That is amazing. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Okay, great. Um, all right. So as you guys keep popping comments in, that's great. And I'm gonna just I'm gonna kind of get us rolling because there is a lot to cover. And as you'll find out very soon, part of healing your adrenals is not staying up late and being off of screens as early as possible. So I actually don't even usually do classes this late anymore. Um, just because you'll hear why you'll hear why. Um, but my name is Christy Collins. I am a diamond leader with Young Living and um, I am really honored to be here on Essentially Powerful. Um, we started Gosh, I remember when Pam and I started our monthly education, they were calls like for the first year. Or so that was back in 2012. We started a monthly call, a teleclass. And then once we launched the Essentially Powerful page, we 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 kind of transitioned into um, Facebook Lives after a while. And um, it's just so fun. It's so fun to be back in this page and to be sharing some personal experiences with you guys. Um, so... My experience with adrenals um, 
you know, you guys may have noticed that I have not been on the Essentially Powerful page as much um, in the past year or so, and that's partly due to my adrenal story. Um, I feel like my adrenals, you'll hear more about reasons why adrenals can get burnt out and overloaded as we go through this class, but for me, you know, it's been kind of years in the making of you know, childbirths and little kids and working really hard, always working hard. I mean, I feel like I've been burning my adrenals out since I was a kid. I just, the over, whole overachiever, um, if there was an A to be had, I wanted the A plus. And then, you know, with my Young Living business, I built a diamond in two and a half years. And I just, it, it's always been, my life has always been pedal to the metal. Work as hard as you can, work first and then play later if you have time, because there's always work to do, right? That just was kind of my personality. I don't know if that's any of your personalities, but um, I know that type A personalities like mine can oftentimes have more uh, tendency to go towards adrenal burnout than others. But I think it's it's kind of rampant in our society and in our culture, and I don't think that we as a, as a society, we don't honor the things that allow our adrenals to be healthy. And that is one of the things that I'm really passionate about is honoring the adrenals. Um, and I took the time to honor mine. So uh, last year, there was kind of this final piece of the puzzle for me. I knew my adrenals were pretty shot. I was pretty clear on that. Um, and then I had this massive anxiety attack. And it was just like my whole body was just telling me like, you if you don't slow down and listen to us, you literally, we're gonna force you to. There, and so there were just signs after signs after signs. I would I would be tired all day and then I'd get in bed at night and my mind would just just blow up and race and I couldn't fall asleep. Or I'd finally, I'd fall asleep and then I'd wake up like several times in the middle of the night. I was always anxious, I was always on edge. I was, I was always like this tired, wired kind of a feeling and I never felt like I got on this even keel ever. I never felt like I could calm down. My whole nervous system just felt like it was like all the time, all the time. It was really, really, it was what I knew as normal. So I didn't even really understand how bad off I was until I spent a year healing my adrenals. And now when I kind of like, if I revisit those places for a day or for an hour or for even a minute, I'm like, oh, whoa, I don't want to go back there. So I think a lot of us are honestly in adrenal burnout. We don't even know it because it's just normal. This is just how we operate. It's just how we feel all the time. So as of last year, last fall, I really made a conscious effort to completely revamp everything. I had always talked about doing that and I would do it for maybe a week and then I would get sucked back in, you know, to like just my normal way of doing things. But I really made a line in the sand last fall. And so it meant saying no to a lot of things um, and it meant saying yes to myself. It meant saying yes to rest, which I really had never done before until last year. So um, I'm really excited to share this with you because it's not just something I've read in a book. You know, sometimes I do classes and it's information I've gathered from different resources. This is not that. Well, it is. There are a lot of there's a lot of information I've gathered because over the you know over the fall and winter of last year, I was really immersing myself into adrenals and into um, circadian rhythm and in just into all these things that I knew I was going to need to really understand because I feel like if I don't understand why I, I want to make changes, I won't do it. You know, like, do you guys ever feel that way? It's like, you know exactly what you should be doing because people tell you like, eat lots of vegetables, go to sleep early, blah, 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 blah. And you're like, oh, I know all that, but then you don't do it because you don't understand why it's important for you personally. So the adrenals were really important for me personally. And so I have not just learned this information that I'm gonna share with you, I have lived it. And I have lived it now for a year. Um, and I will not go back. I experiment with testing, like testing how, where my edge is in keeping my adrenals healthy. And so that's what I'm in this, this new phase I'm in now. It's like, I'm testing. I just, you know, started posting on Instagram today for the first time in since May. Testing, like, will Instagram push me over my adrenal edge? I don't know. We'll see. But it's it's really fascinating. It's fascinating for me. So I'm really excited to talk with you guys about it tonight. Um, 
Okay, what we're gonna talk about first is kind of what are adrenals, what do they do, um, how um, can they get out of balance, what are the symptoms and signs that they might be out of balance. We're gonna talk about the two things that you want to do in order to heal them. I'm gonna keep it simple. Two things, that's what you need to do. Simple but not easy though, because it does require, for many of us, for me it did massive lifestyle shifts. Um, and then at the end, what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about Young Living. How does Young Living fit into the adrenal equation? This is not one of those things where I'm just gonna tell you, oh, just get this oil and put it on your wrist for a month and you'll be great. Adrenals are different. They're not, usually by the time your adrenals are shot, you have spent a long time of your life um, burning them out. So it's, it's a marathon to heal them and um, we'll talk about that later. So um, that's kind of the game plan for tonight and I want you please, please, please um, to ask questions as we go along and I will do my best to get to them and if I miss it here in the live, I will go back and um, type out an answer um, tomorrow, okay? All right. Um, so what are the adrenals and what do they do? They're basically these little like walnut sized glands. Um, they sit on top of your kidneys, so kind of your lower back area, and they produce adrenaline and they produce cortisol. Those are kind of, you know, your known as your fight or flight response um, hormones. They also produce hormones that regulate the production of sex hormones, your estrogen and your testosterone. So they're extremely important. Um, as we know, the whole adren um, endocrine system, the whole hormone system, it's, it's not just like all these separate little pieces like your pituitary gland and your thyroid and your adrenals and your ovaries and all this. They all are like an orchestra. They all play together. They're all connected. So when we look at adrenals, they're not just this one little you know walnut sized gland doing like one thing that's independent of everything else they're really connected in to everything else that's going on um they're important for your immune function so important for immune function they're also important for your thyroid function um so while they're very tiny in size they're really really important have has anybody heard of the medical medium anthony williams the medical medium he's got amazing books they're kind of like mind-blowing books that you read and you're like oh my gosh I've never heard that before, but I feel like I've always known that, like in my cells and in my soul, you know? So he has these great medical medium books, and in one of the books he talks specifically about adrenals. And I was fascinated to learn that um, the adrenals produce 56 different kinds of adrenaline. 56 different kinds of adrenaline, okay? 36 of these kinds of adrenaline are for just like everyday activities, like um, swimming, bathing, dreaming, having a bowel movement, chewing, eating, all that stuff, right? Just like typical getting your body through the day. There are 20 kinds of adrenaline that are for more um, rare situations and scenarios like roller coasters, <laughs> childbirth, um, if you were to fight off an attacker, if you are in, in, if you're grieving a death, these are kind of more like these big trauma events that we have that our body releases adrenaline so that we can get through them. Um, I noticed this significantly this summer. I went in May with a friend and her kids and my kids came to and we went to an amusement park. And I haven't been to one of those in a long time. And I love roller coasters. Like they're just my favorite. I love roller coasters or I did. <laughs> Unfortunately, this time I got on the roller coasters and I, because I had been healing my adrenals and everything was so calm, when I got on the roller coasters, it was like, it was like the adrenaline, like literally almost did me in. I was like, I don't think I can do this right now, like, or any, for, for a while. And it took me days to calm down from the roller coasters and like just that surging of adrenaline coming through. So... 56 different kinds of adrenaline. Um, the adrenals really, if you think of them, they're basically how your body responds to a stressor in your life. Okay, so I want everybody who's on here, there's 34 people on here watching live, I want every single one of you to take a moment and think about right now, what is one stressor that you have going on in your life? It could be a small stress, this part of your daily routine, it could be a big um, physical stress that's going on for you. It could be an emotional stress, but I want you to think about one stress. If you have more, you can write them in, but I'd love for you to all write in at least one thing that is a source of stress for you right now. My puppy just came. Are you gonna do the class with me, Teddy? He's gonna, he's gonna settle himself on the couch over there. All right, you guys. 
There he is. Hi, Ted. Yeah, he's asleep. Okay, this is really important, okay? Part of this healing of adrenal process is you really have to develop a relationship with your body. And part of the adrenal healing process is actually slowing down enough to actually think about and, and feel into what is actually going on with your body, your mind, your emotions, your life. Um, you can't heal your adrenals. I don't, I personally don't think without really tuning into like, what is my, what is the reality of my life right now? And part of that is really getting honest, like real and raw and honest about the things that you're asking your body to do. Um, and your mind and your emotions, like those, those stressors that you're allowing into your life. Sometimes we can't control them, but a lot of times we just allow them in. Um, so finances, sleep, work, oh, seven days of the flu, oh my gosh. I hope you're using all of the thieves. Raindrop, Kimberly, raindrop, if you have the raindrop boils. Full-time job, work, grad school, money, finances, work, kids arguing, managing eczema in your kids. Um, bipolar stepson, spine issues, foot fracture, depression in your adult son, work. Okay, so a lot of a lot of things, a lot of things um, around work, money. So a couple of things I want you to, I'm going to throw out some things while you guys um, continue to respond. So those of you who are just jumping on, I want you to comment with some kind of a stressor that you have going on in your life um, right now. So small stressors, I mean, even little things like losing your keys, right? Misplacing your wallet, running late, um, having your children, someone's talking about kids, kids yelling at you at once, mom, what are we having for dinner? Mom, when are we going to hockey? Mom, 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 right? <laughs> um, like getting to the store, forgetting your shopping list, like those little things, those trigger little adrenal responses. So if you think about all the little things during the day, Constant, constant, little, small stressors. The adrenals have to respond to them. That's their job. Um, big physical stressors include chronic illness, um, if you've had a recent surgery, um, if you are doing intense workouts, fitness training, if you are doing like CrossFit and you're doing like really intense, like even power yoga, things like that, that can be a stressor on the body that can produce oxidative stress, um, which the body has to deal with and the adrenals have to respond to. Um, <clears throat> emotional stresses. Well, I mean, right now, sometimes even just being on social media can be stressful because there's just so much coming in about just all the changes happening in our world right now. And, um, it can be hard to see that many posts and that much angst and fear and frustration, even going onto social media from an emotional perspective, right? Like it's like when we watch movies when we, when we get scared and we get tense and we start to sweat and, you know, we're watching a movie, it's not even real. That same thing can happen on social media as we're seeing all these people's posts about, you know, wars and vaccines and, you know, government and fires and all these things. And so we have to realize too that sometimes even something like being on social media can be a big emotional stress on the adrenals. Any kind of death in the family, divorce, um, marriage issues, financial issues, emotional abuse from someone, um, bullying, right? These are all things that really take a toll on the adrenals. So what happens when you are in a stressful situation like that is that your adrenals have to respond. Um, they're primed for it, right? And so when we think about back in the early times, I know we talk about this a lot, but I'll say it again because I, I think we can't ever hear it too many times. You know, if you think about, you know, in caveman time, the dangers and the stresses were real, right? They were, you know, being chased by a wildebeest and, you know, like not having food and, um, you know, giving birth in a cave. <laughs> I mean, the stresses were real. And so the body is, is designed to respond to it. So the adrenals basically release adrenaline. They release adrenaline to like get you through it. Well, now in our society, we're like constantly bombarded with all these stressors all the time. Some of them aren't even real, but the body doesn't know that. The adrenals don't know that. So they're just doing what they're supposed to do. However, when you are on high alert all the time, okay, and only you know what that means for you, your adrenals can get damaged. When, 
when they become overextended, when there are too many crises for them to respond to, they basically have the equivalent of an adrenal nervous breakdown. They start to behave very erratically. And so exhausted adrenals um, can produce either too much or too little uh, hormone. I think sometimes we think of adrenal burnout as the adrenals have just literally like almost died and they're not producing anything, but the opposite can be true. It's almost like this, um, like someone who has massive mood swings when they're bipolar and they're either really, really up or like really, really down. The adrenals can be that way. They can be, um, you know, very overactive or they could be very underactive as well. Um, and you don't need to know all this to heal them, but I, I want you to have a backstory on them so you can develop this like honor and respect for your adrenals and what they do. And so you can understand why, when I get to some of the lifestyle stuff, why it, it behooves you to look into making some of the changes. Um, okay, I'm actually curious, do any of you, cause I know that I felt this way, um, when I was in like the depths of my adrenal fatigue, I often felt a little bipolar. I would either be like totally ramped up and like, <laughs> working, working, just like everywhere, let me do this, let me do that, right? Or I would be low. Like I had days when I did not want to get out of bed. I mean, I had months where I did not want to get out of bed in the morning. And I, in fact, I would stay up really late at night watching stupid TV, working, just doing stupid stuff at night because I didn't want to go to bed because when I went to bed, I knew I'd wake up in the morning and I didn't want to feel depressed in the morning. So I just tried not to go to sleep which was obviously a really not smart choice, but in the moment, like when you're in those mood swings, you have trouble getting yourself out of the cycle. And I knew all the things, and I was using oils and I was doing all these things, but I, I hadn't addressed the real problem, which was the adrenals. And so when I would vacillate between these two, like ups and downs, it was really hard. And the adrenals don't like that. They do not like to ping pong back and forth between extremes. That is really stressful for them. So it's important to realize as you're starting to heal them that you're, you're, you're searching for this stability. You're searching for this like very calm, sustained place. Um, Okay, so some of you know what I'm talking about. Yes, depressed, then anxious, tired, then wired. Like it, it's it's a really hard thing to get um, to cut to kind of get in the middle. But it, it it can be done, and it it doesn't take a long time. But it takes some very specific things that have to slot into place for that to happen. Um, okay, so let's talk about how adrenal fatigue really briefly can affect other parts of the body. So one thing, if you have adrenal fatigue, your pancreas can become inflamed or enlarged because it can work overtime to compensate for the adrenals underperforming. Secondly, if your adrenals are, are kind of compromised, your heart has to work harder than normal to regulate um, the unusual adrenaline and cortisol and blood sugar levels that are happening. Third, your liver has to work over time, if cortisol is rushing through the body and kind of just an adrenaline is rushing through the body and destroying the liver's glucose reserves, and also, man, the liver takes a hit when the adrenals are sending out adrenaline. When you get stressed or you have some crises, big or small happen, the adrenaline floods through. It's really toxic for the body. It's like corrosive for the body. So your liver, God bless it. It's like, I'll take one for the team. And it literally like soaks up all that excess adrenaline. And then it sits and it kind of corrodes the liver. So we know the liver is kind of the seat of everything in our body, right? The liver detox is the detox station of the body. So we don't want to be putting extra um, work on the liver or the heart or the pancreas or the thyroid or any of the things that the adrenals are connected to. Okay, um, so I, oh yeah, no, I'll show you that later. Actually, no, I'm gonna show you now because I'm worried I'm gonna forget. Okay, you guys all have the essential oil desk reference, right? If you do not have the essential oil desk reference, you need to get the essential oil desk reference. Anyone who has oils or Young Living products in their home wants this. It's from Life Science Publishing and it is, as you can see, extremely thick. It's like 810 pages long. And it is kind of the oil Bible. So one of the things I wanna show you right now is the adrenal Vitaflex points because when I get to the oils section, I don't wanna to forget to mention this, so I'm gonna just say it right now. Um, so you can see on here, hold on, let me find it first before I turn it around. All right, 
These are your feet. The bottoms of your feet are maps to the entire body. You can see up here is the brain, pineal gland, pituitary. This is kind of like the top of the body, the top of the toes. And then as you move down your body, you move down the foot. So adrenals, I just lost it again. Where are they? Here, here they are. Adrenals are right here on your left foot. So they're like kind of right in the middle. They're like right in the middle of the foot. So if you ever need to apply oils, you don't wanna apply them right on your adrenals, you can apply them right there on your left foot, right in the middle of the inside, okay? And then I also wanna show you um, the nervous system connection points where on your spine. So the adrenals are right here on your spine, T10. So they're right in the middle. So this is why it's so fun. I mean, you don't need to know these things. This is also why I just honestly love to apply oils on the whole bottom of my foot, on up and down my whole spine, <laughs> because then I don't have to worry about remembering. I can never remember these points, ever, ever. I don't know why, I just can't remember them. That's why I need the book. Um, and then on your hand, um, your adrenals are actually located right here on your hand. So like just under where your thumb, your thumb joint is, is your adrenals right there on both hands. So those are just some areas. In fact, even right now, you could just even, you know, press on and massage your adrenal hand point if you want. Sometimes it'll be sore if your adrenals are compromised, sometimes not, but just, you know, just give your, the inside of that thumb a little, a little massage. Okay, I'll try and remember to go back to those when we get when we get to the end, but I didn't want to forget them. So different signs of adrenal burnout, adrenal fatigue, adrenal imbalance. A lot of you have already talked about what these are, all right? So difficulty going to, to sleep at night, difficulty staying asleep at night, difficulty waking up in the morning, feeling tired, and tired that is not um, relieved by sleep. So in the heart of my adrenal fatigue, I could sleep for 12 hours and I could still feel tired. I could sleep 12 hours a night for like two weeks straight and still feel tired. Um, <clears throat> you often just have a decreased energy and for everything, like decreased mood, decreased libido, decreased motivation, like you just don't really wanna do stuff. And then on the other hand, sometimes you'll have times where you're so anxious and revved up and um, like just uh, kind of like a ping pong ball all the time and you can go back and forth. Um, you can have your digestion can slow down, you can be constipated, you can have sweating, you can sweat even though you're not performing really anything. You're not like working out, you're just like sitting there typing and you can start sweating. Um, craving, cravings for caffeine, cravings for sugar, cravings for like sh um, just soda, anything to like wake you up. And also um, the heart palpitation someone mentioned, that can be it, a, a symptom of it. And also it, just inability to handle stress of any kind. I know that my boys really noticed this when I was struggling with adrenal stuff because they'd be like, oh my gosh, like I would, you know, lose my keys or I would forget to do something and I would just, I would lose it. I just literally couldn't handle anything, anything outside of like my bare minimum. If it was like, oh, can you go to the store and get this because we forgot bananas, it would like throw me into a tizzy. I just, it was like, no, I can't. I, I can't even think about going to the store. Like, don't ask me to get bananas. Like, I, I just couldn't deal with anything extra outside of like eating my food. Really, like it for me, it was really, really, it was a really, really challenging time. So those are some things. Let me see if there's anything else in that list. If you have, if you get PMS symptoms, they can be aggravated if your adrenals are um, kind of out of whack as well. Yeah, depressed, just less enjoyment with life. Um, yeah, that's kind of it. The tricky part is that those are symptoms of a lot of different things, right? I mean, so it's hard to know sometimes if your adrenals, you can get blood work done, you can do saliva testing, you can do all that. Um, I think sometimes our bodies intuitively just know I, I just knew that there, the adrenals needed me to do some different things. And, and I don't, none of these things I'm gonna to talk to you about today as we get to these solutions now, they're not gonna be bad for anyone. 
there's nothing I'm going to recommend that I'd say, but those of you who have this, don't do that. No, these are all things that will inevitably make every person who implements them healthier. <laughs> like it just, they just will. So when in doubt, it can't hurt to support the adrenals. It just can't. So any questions about what I've shared before I jump into the two things that you can do um, to help support your adrenals? Anything that you guys um, are confused about, wondering about, unclear about from what we um, just covered? Or if there's anything that you were like, wow, I didn't know that before, or you know, maybe there's something that really resonated with you, I'd love to hear. So I'll wait for just one second see what people are you guys are troopers you're sticking with me okay so just keep questions coming pop questions pop things in here as we go and um and i will chat with you when i see them okay so we talked about what adrenals are how they can become imbalanced what it can look like when you're imbalanced um, I want to talk to you a little bit about how to support them. Um, again, it really requires honoring your body. And for many of you, it's going to require some really big shifts. Um, they're not hard shifts. They just might require some creativity and some switching of things. Um, the rule of thumb that I have heard people say is that it can take, um, for every decade that it took you to get adrenally compromised, you're gonna maybe need at least a year of adrenal recovery to get better. So let's say, for example, for the past 10 years, you have just you have just been like, you have been killing your adrenals for 10 years. You're gonna probably need at least a year to support them to get them back to optimal, um, just kind of optimal working. Um, no, Kathy, I'm just about to tell you guys the two things. Uh, Michelle, I didn't notice any weight loss. I tend to stay pretty darn, I've been at like the same weight for like 15 years. No, maybe longer, 25 years. I don't know. I vacillate within like five, seven pounds, just, you know. So um, I did not notice that, but I do notice that I do notice a lot of changes. I've noticed my digestion has improved tremendously. My skin has improved tremendously. Um, just overall like puffiness and things like that has improved tremendously so okay so i want i tell you that one year for every decade idea not because i want to scare you because i want you to think that this is like gonna overtake your life it's not but i just want you to have realistic expectations if you've spent 10 years really beating up your adrenals you can't expect them to just you know, switch in like a month, right? So I know a lot of people think, well, I'm just going to get a bottle of Vendoflex and I'll put it on my wrist and I'll smell it every day for a month and I should be fine. No, like, I mean, if you have very light adrenal compromise, maybe, but if you have been, you know, burning the candle at both ends and expecting so much of your body and being, had these stressors over and over again, day in, week in, you know, month in, year in, over and over, it makes sense it's going to take some time. Because the adrenals, remember, are not just these little independent glands. They're like, they're interconnected to everything. Okay, so the two things that you need to do. Uh, so again, I tried to keep it really, really simple in terms of just what you can remember. And then we're going to break them down into some, we're going to break it down into just different parts. So the two things for your adrenals, they need rest and they need rhythm. That's really it. Rest and rhythm. And um, we'll talk about what each of those means and you'll probably find things that you know you need to do and maybe some that you don't need to do. Um, but yes, you're right, Shannon. Some people do see weight loss um, when they get their adrenals healed because especially in their belly, the belly, the stomach area, because that is kind of tent where we can hold a lot of our stress, stress weight. Let's talk about rest first. Rest was the hardest one for me. I'm not a big fan of resting. I've never really known how to rest. I have it's always been like my El Guapo. I will sit down and then I immediately need to like jump up and do something. I just, I don't rest well at all. Never have. Um, I don't know if anybody else is in that situation, but when you want to heal your adrenals, you're going to learn to rest. So I'm going to tell you some of the things that I did over the last year. The first thing was that I started, um, 
actually listening to my body. Before I would be tired, but I'd be like, well, I can't be tired now because it's two o'clock in the afternoon and I have to do some stuff. And what I did last winter was when I was tired, I rested. So for me, physically what that would look like is I would take a nap in the middle of the afternoon. Sometimes I'll... Teddy, that's just your breath. Teddy forgets that we have other family members that live with us full time. My son came down the stairs. He freaks out. Um, Evie, can you close that door for me? Sorry. That's okay. He can stay in here. Thanks, buddy. Um, Teddy, thank you for guarding me with such ferocious, fierceness, ferocity. Um, okay, so resting. So I took naps. Sometimes up in my room, I took a lot of naps on my biomat. I think the biomat was one of the keys for me, to be honest. I just, it warmed, you'd warm it up and I'd lay on there and I just would fall asleep. Sometimes I'd sleep for 20 minutes, sometimes I'd sleep for two hours and I just really gave myself permission to rest. Uh, sometimes what it looked like when I, when my mind would start to race and I would get really like um, amped up and anxious and stuff, I would go take a bath. And you'd find me in the bath at like 11 in the morning four in the afternoon. That was my favorite time because it started kind of getting sunset and I have these cool salt lamp night lights in my bathroom and I love them. So I would turn those on. But baths, usually once a day. I would, and I spent a couple months vacillating between my bed and my biomat and the couch. And I mean, I was still doing things in my life. It wasn't like I was just laying there. But I, it wasn't like this quick, like two seconds, let me sit down and have a cup of tea. It was like, I'm now gonna go rest for a while. And that was really important. So thinking about how you can fit rest into your day, even if you're working a full-time job, finding a place where you can go and sit, a place you can go sit outside, even if you have to go in your car and you have to like turn the seat warmers on and put a blanket on, I've done that too. And when I was at hockey rinks, I would just cover myself up and I would just put the seat all the way back and I would just, rest, lock the door to be safe, right? Um, so that's really important. You, tuning into the adrenals means tuning into the whole body and listening when it's talking to you. The other thing that um, I had to do was I had to adjust my workouts. So for me, resting meant stopping intense workouts and moving into gentler ones. Now, a lot of times people are like, well, I can't give up my blah, blah, blah. And it's like, I understand. What I was doing at the time was I was doing these, sorry, I got, a, I got a hair in my mouth. It's driving me crazy. Let me see if I can get rid of it. There we go. I was doing, now it's in my nose. <laughs> okay, there we go. I was doing beach body workouts and they were like hour long with weights and loops and it was very intense. And so what I did was I started cutting it in half. And so I would do half of the workout one day and the next half the next day. And it took me twice as long, but it was okay. Because one thing I've learned is that with the adrenals, there's this kind of magic window of like 20, 25 minutes for workouts. Any longer than 25 minutes or so, and it starts to really stress the adrenals out. So if you are really feeling your adrenals, you wanna keep your workouts less than 25 minutes. Um, and ideally, you start to, I mean, think of it. If your adrenals are tired and exhausted, why would we be pushing them more? It doesn't make sense. We need some kind of movement during the day, right? To just alert our body to the fact that this is the time to be awake and this is the time to build some energy, right? But we don't need to, why would we exhaust them more? It doesn't make any sense. So it might look like for maybe a few months, you, instead of doing CrossFit, you do yoga. Instead of running, you walk. Instead of power yoga, you do yin yoga, right? Like, it's, it's, just, it's just a kind of this balance of we want to nourish the body. We want to find rest in any way that we can. So we don't have to get rid of exercise, but we need to shorten the duration and we need to, for some of you, you're going to need to lessen the intensity as well. Um, also saying no to things. I said no to a lot of things. Uh, I said no to convention last year, last summer. I didn't go. I made the decision like a week before and I thought I was doing much better. I thought I was okay, but I was in a session with my counselor and we were talking and I, it became very obvious to her and I don't know why it didn't hit me in the head like a stack of bricks, but 
I was not healed yet and I was still super tired. And so I started this process in like October. This was now June, July, and I was still really healing. And it, it would take just a little thing to totally knock me off. And so I made the decision not to go to convention. I literally, thinking about it and and again, I, I love convention. I've been every year for like seven years. I, I love it, it's great. But for where I was physically and emotionally with my adrenals, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. So that was a really hard decision for me. I had to like, wait, how is that gonna look? What are people gonna think? I'm gonna miss seeing people. I already have like coffee dates planned with, with Emily Robbins. Like I had all this stuff that I was gonna do and I had to say, I have to put the body first. And I knew if I went, it would set me back for months. And I didn't want to be set back for months. I'd worked too hard for that. So I just give you that as an example. It doesn't mean you skip convention, but if you are in a place where your adrenals are so fatigued that you need to make decisions around skipping a trip, or I mean, I, I changed so much, right? I didn't do, I haven't done nighttime classes really. I, I would do them really early in the evening or I do them during the day. I didn't do them at night. Um, I rearranged my whole schedule so that um, I didn't have to drive to late night hockey practices. I had um, somebody else on the team, I would drop them off and I'd come home so I'd get to bed by nine and then somebody else would pick them up. I was really clear, I was really, really clear. Of all these things I thought I could never switch or change to support me, I figured out how to make them work. Um, speaking of night times and sleep, that is a huge part of rest, okay? It's not just the napping during the day or the baths or saying no to things or decreasing your um, workouts. It's also sleep. Sleep is probably the number one place where I would say that you need to start. Number one place. You cannot do any of the other things if your sleep is out of whack. It's just impossible because the sleep is the foundation for everything. So let's talk just briefly about sleep. Um, I think... I could do a whole class on sleep and I probably will do a whole class on sleep because there's just too much. But the, the main thing that I want to really um, drill into everybody's brains about sleep is you need to be in bed horizontal as early as possible. You have to be um, finished with everything and literally closing your eyes by 10 p.m. That's it. After 10 p.m., that sleep train leaves the station and then you start to get revved up again. You get into a whole different part of your circ circadian rhythm and it is going to be really hard for you to go to sleep. So you have to be in bed and like lights out by 10 p.m. Now, for that to happen, however, if you have adrenal fatigue, what you'll notice is if you do that and you're like, oh, whatever, oh, it's 10 o'clock, I'm gonna go to bed, turn off the light, and you'll be laying there unable to sleep probably for a while. And you're gonna be frustrated and say, this doesn't work. The reason it doesn't work is because you, you have really retrained your entire body, your melatonin production is way out of whack, your adrenals are out of whack, so you need to re like do sleep training as an adult. So what that looked like for me was at about five o'clock or so, I when the sun would go down, and usually I'd start turning on all the lights, I did not turn on all the lights. I had little salt lamps all over. Um, I had just, I would turn on the smallest light possible in the room, and if I didn't need lights on, they were off. My goal was I didn't want to create artificial light at nighttime. I still try not to do that. It drives my family crazy, but I just, I like as much darkness as possible. Um, it's because the melatonin starts to kick in when it starts to get dark. That's when the body through the melatonin starts to say, hey, you know what, sleep time's coming. Like, let's start to wind down. The other piece of it was I had to get off screens early enough so my brain would shut off. So for me, for a while, that started, that was like two hours before bedtime. I had to stop all screens, not just computer, not just phone, TV, everything, like literally everything. That blue light from that from those screens really messes with your um, circadian rhythm, really messes with your sleep. So I would eat dinner early and I off. And I just got books. I got books from the library. For, there were, for a couple months there, I just got books. Not exciting books, like fiction books that I'd wanna like keep reading all night long. I got like kinda educational, but kinda boring books. Like I got books, I don't know, war history. It didn't really excite me. Um, I got books, all sorts of different books. I couldn't do personal self-care because that would get my mind revved up on all the things I have to change about myself. I just got these like gardening books, just kind of boring, but just interesting enough that I wanted to read them kind of books. And that's what I did at night. Um, it was really, really great. Um, you can do the blue light blockers, yes. 
I just find too that um, being on screens of any kind, TV is so stimulating the way that the images come in. Social media, everything is just stimulating. It, it, it makes the brain go. And so for me, it wasn't even as much the blue light as it was just the interaction with the screens had to be cut off really, really early. Everyone's gonna find a different um, time frame for them. But for me, I had to do it really early enough so that I could calm down. Um, okay, let's see, what else? That's it. That's it for sleep. And having, I created a sleep rhythm for myself. So I would do the, the low lights. I would get off, I would eat my dinner early. I'd get off the screens. I would lay down and read. I'd lead, read on the biomat. And then I would, I would go upstairs. I would turn on my diffuser, get my sleep oils in there. Then I go take my bath, wash my face. Um, and in the bathroom, I have the salt lamp night lights too, so that I don't even turn on the light in the bathroom. And then I go into bed. I'd journal, I'd read my book, and I'd have lights out. The beginning of it, I was going to bed at like 8.30. And then for like a couple nights, then 9 o'clock. And I went to bed early for a long time, like by 9 o'clock, for like a month. Because I found that if I stayed up later, I would freak out about whether I'd fall asleep. So I had to get in bed early enough that my brain was just totally confident that I'd fall asleep because I had so much time in bed, right? And I also needed a lot more sleep. So when I went to bed like at 8.39, I would still be waking up at the first couple of months at like eight or nine in the morning. I was getting like 12 hours of sleep, but I needed it. Had I waited till 10 o'clock to go to bed, I wouldn't have gotten enough sleep. So anyway, that's just my story. I'm just sharing like bits and pieces of it with you. But I think sometimes we underestimate how much rest we need and we underestimate what an early bedtime is. Some people think, oh, if I go to bed by like 10, that's early enough. No. For some of you, you need to be in bed at 8, 8.30, 9, you know, not forever, but for a little while. Um, all right, Terry, sleeping has been tough for you. Working overnights, yeah, that's really hard. Um, yeah, I mean, and that's where it might mean a, a shift change. That may be where you need to really look at what, you, what you're doing with, with that job and say, is it worth the health impact? They're just, you know, it's a big question, I know, but it's something to think about. It is really hard to support adrenals when you're in opposite, um, in opposite sleep cycles of the natural, natural world. So that's rest. Um, rhythm is very simple. So we talked about two things to support adrenals, rest and rhythm. Um, rhythm, this means the adrenals really like predictability. You know, they're like kids. They like to know, when am I having my snack? And then when am I going to grandma's? And then when am I coming home? And am I going to nap today? Um, if you kind of like go off schedule with a toddler and you're like, yeah, today you don't have to nap. Today you do. No, you don't have to nap. Yeah, you do. It's crazy. Like, they'll just be like, well, I don't want to nap. I didn't nap yesterday. Why should I nap today? Right? You have to have consistency. You have to have rhythm. You have to help them know what to expect as you go through your day. It just makes it so much easier, right? Same thing with the adrenals. They don't like extremes. They don't like um, when you sleep, you know, for 20 hours one night and then three hours the next night. They don't like it when you eat, you know, at different times of the day. Um, trying to see if you can look at your day and, and look at your existing schedule and just see, can I establish some kind of a rhythm and a flow here? Can I eat within like a half hour time frame every day for breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Can I um, always do exercise around the same time? Can I get my bedtimes and my wake up stable? Um, even a simple thing like looking at the weekend and see, do you shift your um, sleep habits dramatically on the weekend? Even just two days of changed sleep and later bedtimes can throw you off for the whole week. So again, looking at, can I, can I get my sleep schedule consistent every night all week long? Um, all right. Also keeping your blood sugar stable is really, really important. Um, if you go for longer than one and a half to two hours after eating, what happens is this stresses out the adrenals. Um, your body basically, the bloodstream starts kind of getting low in glucose, that starts to drop your blood sugar, and then if you don't eat something to get the blood glucose back up, your adrenals basically have to start working and produce adrenaline and cortisol to keep you going. So 
skipping meals and not eating can put your body into fight or flight. So when I was healing my adrenals, I was not doing like intermittent fasting or anything like that because it, again, we're trying to nourish the body. We're trying to always make sure it has what it needs because when it doesn't have what it needs, the adre adrenals have to produce. So this can mean eating every like hour and a half to two hours. Um, it doesn't mean you eat like a full four course meal every hour and a half to two hours. It means like small, simple snacks with complex carbohydrates in them. So if you Google medical medium, adrenal snacks, you'll find all sorts of great options for this, mostly fruits and veggies and things like that. Um, just start to notice if you feel differently when you start having those more regular snacks in your body. I know it's counter to what everyone's saying um, in the nutrition world right now, but again, this is like, it's experimenting, it's trying different things, seeing what works best for your body. So I just wanted to throw that out there for you about the blood sugar. Um, does the diffuser color matter for adrenals? I don't put on any lights at night. Um, I have everything blacked out. It's important to have no light at night um, when you're sleeping, if you can. So I turn off the diffuser light when I close my eyes. Um, okay, lastly, for rhythm. Okay, remember, if we're keeping, trying to keep things on an even keel, we don't want ups and downs. That means we got to get rid of the caffeine, folks. I know I'm going to lose. How many people do I have on now? 29. I wonder how many people I'm gonna lose with that one. Um, caffeine, I don't care what you tell me. I've had people say, oh, caffeine doesn't affect me. Oh, it doesn't affect me. That's bull. I'm sorry, it's bull. And I want you to compare caffeine to alcohol, right? Think of the first time you ever had a drink. Did that alcohol affect you? I bet it did. I know it did me. Um, and then you, if you, you know, you become an adult and now you've had, you know, you, you've had drinks here and there for, you know, 20 years of your life or so, you can have a glass of wine or a beer. It doesn't affect you, but it affected you the first time you had it. Um, same thing with caffeine. Probably the first time you had coffee or soda or an energy drink, it made your, it made your energy go through the roof. It made you all jittery. It made you like wired. And now maybe you have it. It doesn't affect you at all. Um, alcohol and the caffeine are kind of the same. It doesn't mean it doesn't affect you. It is just that your body has had to work so hard to counterbalance that effect that you don't notice it as much. But I will tell you that you can do an experiment to notice if caffeine does affect you. Because if it doesn't affect you at all, then you could stop drinking your coffee tomorrow, cold turkey, and you won't have any symptoms. And I haven't noticed, I haven't really... I don't know anyone that's had, that drinks more than one cup of coffee a day that can stop cold turkey and not notice something. Um, so the caffeine is putting your body into fight or flight mode. Um, I did a post on this before. And so if you want to heal your adrenals, you need to stop the coffee. Even the de decaf still has, still has that same effect. So again, I would make it a very slow process. We'll talk in a second about products you can use to help with that. But um, first, you, you, if you want to get your sleep on track, it really can be hard to do when you've got caffeine going through your system. So you want to kind of do those at the same time. You want to start getting to bed earlier, but you're going to probably need to start cutting down the caffeine if you aren't able to fall asleep at night. So they kind of go, they go hand in hand. Um, okay, so those are the two things, the rest and the rhythm. Um, I didn't lose people. I've gained people, even after the caffeine remark. <laughs> um, okay, so I want to talk to you about some Young Living products that are going to help support your body through this whole process. As you're shifting your sleep schedule, as you're trying to find your energy again without caffeine, as you're trying to calm down your emotions and kind of that like bipolar feeling, there's lots you can do with Young Living to help. I tried to pull out the things that... Um, I try to pull out the things I think are most important because one of the things we're trying to do with adrenals is to not stress you out. So I don't want to give you a laundry list of a million different things to do. So no matter what you're doing, who you are, where you live, what's going on, um, you should be on Ninja Red every single day. Um, whether your adrenals are just like a little bit compromised or they're totally shot, Ninja Red. Um, the wolfberries and ninja red are adaptogens. They help the body to adjust and to balance. They're very high in vitamin C, which supports every system in the body. Um, 
If you're having trouble at night, sometimes getting that vitamin C from Ninja Red can really help because lack of vitamin C can cause night waking. Um, when we have chronic stress in our life, it makes us tap into all of our reserves in our body and stress creates oxidative it creates oxidative stress, um, which creates free radicals. And we know that the antioxidants in Ninja Red help to counterbalance those free radicals. So I also think of the hormone system, which the and adrenals are a part of, and the hormone system is just one part of the body, but it's connected to everything. When our, our hormones are directly connected to how we digest, right? And our digestion is directly connected to how um, our brain works and how our immune system works. So if the hormones aren't working well, it affects all the parts and vice versa. So Ninja Red is so important. Um, I actually have my little packet here. So important because it supports every single system in the body. So if we're looking for a very simple thing to do, easy, stress-free, it's really just drinking two ounces of Ninja a day. And if you're not part of our January Ninja Challenge, I really encourage you to join us because Ninja is, um, it's just so fun. And you'll start to see big changes. It also helps with energy. So that's a big part of the adrenal thing. It helps with digestion. It's just, it's just great. So Ninja Red for everyone. Um, if you are, especially if you're a woman, I also really recommend um, Endoflex. Okay, Endoflex is a combination of different oils. It has nutmeg in there. Um, it has spearmint, which is what I think gives it its amazing smell. I, it just smells so good. Endoflex is one of my favorite smelling blends. Um, what else does it have? It has myrtle, which is so good for the hormone system. Um, sage, which is so good for the hormones. Geranium. The nutmeg is really, really helpful. Nutmeg is really helpful for adrenals. So um, what I like about Endoflex is that there are so many different oils and blends that Young Living has for hormones. But trying to come up with a protocol can be stressful sometimes because there are so many and then you have to remember what to take and when to take them and where to put them and all that. I like Endoflex because it's a blend and it supports the whole endocrine system. Not just the adrenals, but everything the adrenals are connected with. So what you can do is you can just take you can just take your Endoflex. What I like to do is just take a couple drops um, and I will rub it right on my thyroid and I will put it on my lower back over my adrenals. You could again put this on the Vitaflex points that we talked about earlier, um, kind of towards the middle inside part of your left, your left foot. Um, or on your hands right here. You can also take Endoflex Vitality and you can put some drops under your tongue, which is really helpful, especially if you're looking for kind of that nice surge of energy throughout the day. So if you're just getting started and you kind of just want the basics, Ninja Red and Endoflex. Um, the other thing that I would do daily if you are having adrenal fatigue at all is Super B, okay? And let me tell you why for Super B. Um, you're going to want to have this in your essential rewards every month along with the Ninja Red every month. You don't have to have Endoflex every month because there are like 300 drops in here. And so this is going to last you several months, even if you're applying it a couple times a day. These two you're going to want to do um, every month. So Super B, let me tell you about this. Um, first, for mood. Okay, so B vitamins regulate your body's serotonin production. Serotonin is that kind of feel good um, hormone. So it basically helps support steady mood. So instead of ping ponging between depressed and, and like wired, you're gonna stay more stable in the middle. Um, sleep, um, taking Super B actually not right before bed because Super B helps with energy too. So if you take Super B before bed, it actually helps with libido too. If you take Super B before bed, you're going to not be able to sleep, but you're going to have lots of energy and you'll have a high libido. So maybe that's what you want before bed. But if you're trying to get to sleep early so you can keep your adrenals um, happy, you'll want to take it in the morning and the afternoon. Okay, so it Super B has selenium in it, which most of us are very deficient in. Um, if we do not have enough selenium, we will have wake-ups and sleep disruption in the middle of the night. Um, Super B also has magnesium in it, which is another mineral that most of us are deficient in unless you're eating dark leafy greens all day long. Without it, we can have restless sleep. With Lack of magnesium can cause like um, muscle twitching, like those muscle spasms, and cold hands and feet. Um, 
And also the B12 in here helps to produce, helps the body naturally produce its own melatonin, which is that key sleep hormone that helps us say, oh, it's time for bed now. I should start getting sleepy, right? Um, but also Super B helps with energy, like I said, which is why you don't take it right before bed. Um, it has zinc in it, which helps keeps our brain sharp, and it has nutmeg in it, which is, as we know, is good for adrenals. So this one is kind of everything in one bottle. These are little capsules. I'll show you what they look like. They're this big, you just swallow them down. I would start with two in the morning, and then if you know that you're gonna have an energy sag in the afternoon, take two again, like right after lunchtime. Um, B vitamins actually um, are not stored in the body, so you have to replenish them daily. So you're gonna to wanna to take Super B every single day. So that is when you're gonna put in essential rewards, you're just gonna leave it there, you're gonna have it come through in your order every single month. Um, okay, let me see if there are any questions so far. Let's see. Ah, thank you, Barbara. Yeah, I put on makeup for the first time in like a month today. I figured I'd doll myself up for you guys. Um, Kimberly, have you been taking um, Super B? And that's what you've noticed changes from? I notice really big energy changes from Super B um, when I take it and when I don't take it. I really tell you, you put it in your ER, try it for 90 days, and just notice what happens. Um, it's great, it's really great. And it's so needed. B vitamins are so needed for all of us. Okay, let's talk about, um, I also wanna talk about multigreens. This is another kind of multitasker that you could move to. I wouldn't start Super B and Multigreens at the same time because you want, I think it's really important to start supplements one at a time because if something works, you wanna know what, that it worked. You wanna be able to know. Um, and if you take a couple supplements at once and start them all at the same time, you won't know. Wow, I slept great. Was that the Super B? Was that the Immu Pro? Was that the multi-greens I don't know so what I say is I would start with your ninja red start with your super B and then if you need more energy um, or still better sleep then you add in the multi-greens so multi-greens again you're gonna take in the morning and the afternoon um, you can open up the capsules and put them in smoothies if you want to they are more like a, a powder filled capsule um, it why why multi-greens for adrenals well it has choline in it which helps us to kind of like initiate the start of our REM sleep cycle. Um, that's the sleep cycle that the body uses to really reduce inflammation, to kind of process through what's happening from the day, um, to restore and regenerate. So that's a really important part of the sleep cycle. It's the sleep that helps us wake up refreshed and energized. Um, choline, which is in multigreens also, I'm just seeing in my notes, helps the brain focus on one thing at a time which is helpful for adrenals, right? They like just simple focus. And at night, the, this can help the body to kind of tune out noise, other sensory input, and help us stay asleep. So I need to start taking this again, I think. Um, also, there's all sorts of greens in here. It, the greens help us so much with energy. So this is really great to take if you feel like Maybe you started taking the Super B in the morning and the afternoon, but you're still a little tired in the afternoon. Take some multigreens in the afternoon along with your Super B. Um, our Royal Crown Diamond leader, Vicki Offer, said that multigreens was the first supplement she took where she could immediately feel the difference. Like she would take it and she would just, her energy, she would have noticeable energy, um, whereas before she had been very lethargic. So um, that one's a good one to have in your back pocket if you need more energy, if you need better sleep. Um, Terry, for Super B, um, morning and then in the afternoon again if you need two more capsules. Super B is one of those things, like if you're in a really time of high intensity stress, like really intense, like someone's in the hospital or you're at a really crazy job or you're traveling, you can up your Super B, right? So just because it says take two or what does it say? Yeah, take two. Um, you can take more than that if your body is going through a lot of stress. I know some diamond leaders that take like six to eight of those a day at times in their life. So just kind of notice how it makes you feel and find your sweet spot in there. That, that's the same for any supplement. Okay, um, let's talk about sleep. So one of the things I had to do as I was doing my kind of my resetting of my sleep, in addition to going to bed really early, turning off the lights, kind of getting into my nighttime routine, a big part of my nighttime routine at the beginning was Immupro. 
Um, this was not, um, this was not something that I did long term because we we want to let our bodies uh, natural melatonin production and natural melatonin timing take over. But sometimes it's so out of whack that we need help kind of resetting. So Immupros are these chewable tablets. They're this big. They taste um, kind of like strawberries. They have wolfberries in them. Um, and the wolfberries, as we know, are adaptogens that are so supportive for the immune system, for everything. Um, it also has melatonin in it. So this is something you would take about half hour or so um, before you want to go to bed. So let's say you decide, well, I'm going to start going to bed like at nine o'clock now just to try and like get earlier beds and all that. You'd want to take your Immupro at 830 um, because you want to start training your body to start getting tired around that time. Um, I wouldn't take this. You don't. You shouldn't need to take this for more than like two weeks or so. It, if you are getting into bed early and you're practicing these other things we're talking about, you won't need it for a long, you know, like a long term. But it is something that I will go back to if I am in a period of stress or my brain is working over time or like I'll take one after this class tonight because I'm not usually on screens this late. And so I know I can feel myself getting a little revved. So I'll take one of these before bed. Also, if your children have a tough time falling asleep, give them half of one of these. If they're really young, cut it into quarter. You know, if they're like five or under, give them a quarter. Um, my boys know to take this when they can't sleep now, and it works really well. Um, what else did I want to tell you about Immupro? Let's see. Um, melatonin. Oh, so melatonin is cool. I should do a post in, in EP about melatonin. Um, so melatonin is released in the brain, but it circulates in the blood. So taking it orally, taking melatonin orally, like an Immupro will help you feel sleepy. It basically, melatonin coordinates the clocks in your tissues and in your body organs to the master clock in your brain. So it helps make your sleep more restorative. One thing I wanna tell you about melatonin, it doesn't make you go to sleep. So this is not, Immupro is not like a sleeping pill. It's not making you go to sleep. It's melatonin is supporting your body's natural triggers for becoming drowsy. Um, it's basically supporting the body into remembering how to signal itself to go to sleep. Kind of like if you were to pull down all the blinds and turn off the lights, that will signify through your eyes, hey, it's time to go to bed. That's what the melatonin does. The other cool thing I noticed about Mimipro is the melatonin can help to um, kind of coordinate the clocks in your gut to the clocks in your brain. So it can actually help to regulate your digestion as well. So if you have a reluctant bowel, or you, maybe you like would love to be going to the bathroom in the morning a little more regularly, um, I've noticed that about Imipro, which makes me love it even more. And the reason why I like this, because we do have Sleep Essence, which is a, Sleep Essence is another supplement for sleep. It's a, it's a little capsule. It has um, lavender oil, valerian, and rue oil in it. Um, so you can take that for sleep too, and that does have melatonin as well. But why I like the Immupro, besides the fact that it's chewable, is because it also has the zinc in it, um, and it has the, um, hold on, what are they called? The reishi mushrooms and mataki mushroom powder, which is really good for the immune system. So especially in the fall and winter months, I think the Immupro is a really it's kind of a better choice than sleep essence because you're gonna get the sleep effect and you're also gonna get the immune support effect. Okay, so we'll just talk about oils real quick and then we'll talk about some caffeine alternatives and then we'll call it a night. Um, okay, so for oils, and I'm looking at Super B. Yeah, take Super B in the, um, the morning or the afternoon. Don't take it before bed unless you wanna be awake all night having sex because your libido is gonna get boosted up and you're gonna have tons of energy and you won't sleep. So if that's what you're going for, take it at night. If you wanna to go to sleep, um, take it and have energy during the day, take it earlier. Um, oils, we already talked about Endoflex, which is a really great one to put over your thyroid, over your lower back adrenals, um, or on any of the adrenal um, points. You can also make a, an adrenal um, roll-on blend and there are three oils that I put in mine. We already talked about how good nutmeg was, is for the adrenal, so you're gonna put seven drops of um, nutmeg. You're gonna do seven drops of clove, and three, yeah, three drops of rosemary. Maybe somebody can write that down in the comments. Seven nutmeg, seven clove, and three rosemary. 
I feel like that's good for like a five milliliter roll on. And if you're using a 10 milliliter, you wanna double it. Um, or if you kind of want to, um, I like my oil strong, so I, I just put in a lot. But that's a good like baseline for starting out um, with a five mil. And you can again put that here, rub it on your adrenals. I, at the beginning, would set a timer on my phone for every hour and it would go off and I would put my Endoflex on and I'd put my adrenal roll on. And that's what I kind of started out with. Um, the other blend that you can use for energy is, ironically, energy. Um, I think this stuff smells not so hot, to be honest. So it's not my first go-to, but I know some people swear by energy over their adrenals. I would probably put some peppermint on on top of it just to change the smell up a little bit. Although, who knows? I haven't smelled it in a while, so maybe I'll like it. Actually, this is a shocker. I haven't smelled this in a long time. But funny enough, when we heal parts of our body and bring them into balance, sometimes the smell of oils change. And I don't mind the smell of this anymore. That's so fascinating. But when my adrenals were shot, I hated the smell of this. Interesting. So don't give up on energy, I guess. I just, I'm gonna try that one tomorrow now. Um, okay, um, I take Thyromin before I go to bed. If you wanna add Imipro half hour before bed, still okay. Yep, you're good. You're totally good. Um, let's briefly talk about oils for sleep. Um, because again, oils, we know when we smell oils, they go into the limbic system of the brain. They help to um, just kind of soothe everything around trauma and emotion and stress and all of that. So oils should play prominently in your adrenal um, sleep routine. So what I would suggest is, again, before you go to get your bedtime routine, like brushing teeth and washing face and all that, put oils in your diffuser. There's a couple different oils that I love and I will share with you, but I would love for you guys to share in the comments what you love for sleep and what works really well for you. Um, vetiver is really great. Um, vetiver helps to calm the brain down um, so that you can fall asleep. So if you're looking for something to put in the diffuser as you're starting to fall asleep, vetiver is great. Um, you can mix that in with some um, orange to help boost the mood. You could put some cedar wood in there to help you feel really protected and nourished. Um, Roman chamomile as well. Roman chamomile, I know I've posted about this before, is known as the elephant tranquilizer for kids, but it's also kind of could be an elephant tranquilizer for adults. Um, it basically helps slow your brain waves down. Um, and it's part of the, the promos this month, so you can get it for free. But that one I love to put in my diffuser with lavender. I just think it, it just smells so good. I did not like Roman chamomile at first either. It was way too strong for me. So if you get it and you're like, oh, this sucks, don't worry. Just put more of an oil that you like with it at first, but try, but get it in there. Get it in that diffuser. Um, you use six drops lavender, three drops valor. We have lavender and cedarwood fans. Awesome. Awesome. Lavender was my next one I was going to talk about, actually. You can't talk about sleep without talking lavender. Um, there's a great spray that you can make. Um, I'll try and post that. If you put lavender and um, vanilla extract in a spray bottle with some water, spray it on your pillow. It smells like vanilla lavender spray. It's amazing. Um, so that was something I did, too. I'd spray my little pillow. I'd get my diffuser going. Um, if you want to stay in REM sleep, which is again that very restorative part of the sleep, Dreamcatcher is a blend that is great. Um, I was worried about using Dreamcatcher because I thought it was going to amp me up and not help me sleep, but actually it really helped me sleep. So I have a couple recipes with Dreamcatcher that I love. Dreamcatcher, Clarity, and Palo Santo together are like the best ever. Um, Dreamcatcher, Palo Santo... Copa Iba and um, Idaho Balsam Fir, another great one. Like I'm just waiting for Idaho Balsam Fir to come back because I have been milking my little bottle, but that was such a beautiful diffuser blend for me at the beginning of my adrenal journey. Dreamcatcher, Idaho Balsam Fir, Copa Iba, and Palo Santo. They were, that was like, I think I, I diffused that one night and that was the first night in like two years, I think, that I slept all the way through and I was like, what the heck happened? I was, I was so excited. Um, 
Also, here is a blend that I just, or a little protocol I just learned of that I'm gonna try tonight. It was a blend that Gary Young gave to one of the, the original diamond leaders. So you take Rudavala, which comes in a roll-on or in a bottle, and you put it on the, that little notch in your skull, like right where your hairline meets your neck, rub that in there, the Rudavala, and then take Roman chamomile, three drops, and put it, rub it up and down your neck. That's a Gary sleep special. So I'm gonna try that tonight. Um, and if anybody else wants to try it, let me know what you think. So those are the oils that I'd use for sleep. I mean, you can use any of them too. You can use frankincense. You, I mean, you can use Copa Iba. You can use Peace and Calming. You can use Valor, any of the ones you like. But sometimes um, we need to mix it up a little bit and try something different and, and have our, retrain our brain to be like, this is my sleep blend. When I smell this, I'm going to go to sleep. And that's what that dream catcher blend, that all the dream catcher blends that I've used have, have really helped me do. Um, Last thing that I want to share, um, I know it's not even on the out of stock list. I don't know what's going on. I'm hoping that means that it's going to come back soon because it's winter. So they should be distilling it right around now. So anyway, fingers crossed when you see Idaho balsam fir, snag it as many as you can get because um, it's really sucks when you have to sit there and like be miserly with oils because they're they've been out of stock. Um, okay, last thing, if you're transitioning away from caffeine, I'll make this really short and sweet. Usually people use caffeine, aside from like the fact that they like the taste of it and it's like a fun little ritual and it's, you know, tastier than water and it's part of like this, you know, self-care routine. Often people use caffeine because of the energy and because of the uh, kind of the mental like wakes your brain up. So let's talk about that. If you want energy and you're a soda drinker and you know you need to get rid of the soda or the energy drinks because the caffeine is messing with your adrenals, um, you transition with Zing, Ninja Zing. This is gonna be so much better for your adrenals um, than anything else. And it's got oils in it, it's got the wolfberry in it, it's got sweetened by stevia. It does have some caffeine in it. It's from white, white tea leaf extract. So healthier caffeine, but ideally I want you to be transitioning with this and then eventually getting rid of it. I know I'm telling you, not completely. If you want to zing every now and then, fine, but I don't want people addicted to caffeine, even even Young Living caffeine. But these are great tools to use when you need them. If you need like to go on a road trip or you're cramming for something or you need to stay awake so that you, you know, don't crash off the road, then these are very helpful tools. But I don't think they're crutches that we need to have every single day. That's just my personal opinion. From someone who's been through ad adrenal fatigue. Um, Ninja Nitro, if you like the mental boost and the energy boost from caffeine that makes you kind of feel like you're awake and like you can conquer everything, Ninja Nitro. This little pouch, you're gonna tear off the tab, you're gonna pop it into your Ninja Red for even more energy. Um, and this, is great not just for energy, but also for brain and mental acuity. So you're not gonna notice, so like for example, for me, if I have coffee, I notice effects. When I have Ninja Nitro, I don't get any of that like revved up, antsy, um, like I'm gonna, you know, shoot out through the ceiling kind of feeling. It's very different feeling for me. So I, I love this stuff. I don't, again, I don't use it often, but when I need it, I will use it, um, and I prefer it to zing. Um, not a carbonated drink kind of gal. Let's see. And again, if you need more energy, you just go back to your favorites that you're going to have in your ER, the Super B and Multi Greens, okay? And try starting to just up those instead of the coffee. Um, boo -boo -boo. Okay, we've talked about a lot of things. I would love for you guys to pop last questions in. Um, before um, before I wrap up. And the last thing I wanted to say while well, you guys are popping questions in, I can tell I'm getting tired. My brain is like, it's starting to fade. Adrenals are not a quick fix. So you're gonna be on Ninja, you're gonna be on Ediflex, you're gonna be on Super B, you're gonna be on your oils. Um, you're gonna be on these things for a while because remember, if you tune in late for every decade that you've been burning your adrenals out, you need to have at least, you're probably gonna take about a year to fully recover them. So you don't want to be ordering all of these Young Living goodies through one-time orders. It doesn't make sense because you're gonna have these things in your cart every single month. So what you wanna do is order through Essential Rewards instead. 
Essential Rewards is basically Young Living's, it's a customizable, customizable wellness box that comes from Young Living to your door every month. You get to decide what goes in it every month. You get to decide what day it ships and it's all up to you. So there are gonna be certain things like your Ninja and your Super Bee that are gonna be in there every single month. There are gonna be other things like you might order Endoflex the first month, but then this thing's gonna last you a long time, so you might not need it. So maybe then the next month in your Essential Rewards, you put your three oils for your roll-on. And maybe if you've got still noticed that you haven't kicked the caffeine habit, maybe the next month, now you go have your Nitro and your Zing. So you're just gonna kinda of keep swapping things out as you need them and keep your basics in there. But what's cool is every time you order through Essential Rewards, they're gonna give you points back. 10 to 25% back in points, depending on how long you've been on it, and you can cash those points in for free goodies. So, you know, a couple months in, you might be able to get a whole thing in Ninja for free from Young Living. The other thing is there are promos every month from Young Living, and you guys know this, right? That they give you free stuff every single month. Um, there's cinnamon bark for free this month, um, there's peppermint oil, there's a beanie, there's mittens, there's Roman chamomile, which we just talked about. And a lot of those freebies you can only get for free if you're on Essential Rewards. So there's this whole big benefit to Essential Rewards. But I think really, honestly, for me, I mean, I love the points and I, I love all that stuff. I love free things. But for me, it, the difference is that I'm, I'm making a consistent investment in my health every month. And if I were to order Ninja Red in a one-time order now, the chances of me forgetting to reorder it or getting too busy or getting stressed or whatever is very high, high to quite high. <laughs> Whereas if I have a central reward set up, Ninja just comes to me every single month no matter what. I don't ever forget it, I'm always stocked up, and so it's, it's the easiest way that I know of to take good care of my health, especially when I know that I can get stressed and overwhelmed and not want to do things like get online and place orders. So ER for me is really, really simple. So if you've never set up essential rewards before, please reach out, comment here, we can help you. Um, it's very simple. You just log into your virtual office. There's a little thing on the left that says essential rewards. You click it. You're just gonna set up your first order. You're gonna decide what day it gets processed on. You're gonna select which credit card you want to use or debit card you want to use, and you're gonna save it. And on the processing day, that will kind of convert your order and then Young Living will send it out the next day. So um, if you don't wanna change anything for the next month, you just leave it as is. And then the next month on that same day, it'll process. But if you wanna put something different in, you just go in, delete out what you don't want, put in what you do want. If you want it to come on a different day because you're going on vacation, you just go in and you change the date. It's so easy. So for those who are supporting their adrenals, Essential Rewards is really, really key. Um, and it's one of the best ways that you can get free stuff and free products as you're kind of building your stash. So, any last questions before we, yeah, thank you guys. I know this is this was a long class. I haven't seen you guys in a while, so I just, I, I wanted to just give you all I had. Um, but yes, it is time for us to go to bed for sure. Um, and I may try, try to pop in some things, um, some adrenal posts for you guys. I'll try and pop in some of the recipes for some of these diffuser blends and for the roll-on so that you guys have it. Um, tag anybody who you know um, on Essentially Powerful who might need this, who might not have seen it in their newsfeed. Um, and I hope you guys have a great night. Thank you so much. Bye guys.